The following is a transcript of a conversation between Matthias de Stefano, referred to as me, and his higher self, referred to as I am. 27th December, 2020, Oceania. Me. The first time I set foot in Oceania was in March 2012. We flew in from South Africa and had just started the Harwitum Trail the month before. The emotion produced in me by stepping on those lands was due more than anything to its geography, to its remoteness from the rest of the world. I always loved looking at maps. I can spend hours looking at the contours of the earth, its coasts, its islands. Sometimes when I observe it, I feel like someone who is in love, contemplating the skin of his lover, caressing every contour, feeling the silkiness of it in its forests and its beautiful wrinkles decorating the body of experiences. Those who have lived on earth a long time sometimes naturalize the world itself a lot, and in many cases the new ones are so scared of the pressure that they want to return to the stars. I am. I remember the first time I saw the earth. The blue pearl, they called it. A soul mentioned her once. I was making records of other dimensional systems, and someone brought me a new piece of information. Projects of the Sun in Sector 3 linked to Sirius. I can humanize the message today, when in reality it was an endless list of numbers. I opened the registry and I saw it. It was barely in a period of development, something that today you call Carboniferous, during the Paleozoic era about 360 million years ago. At that time, the tectonic plates moved very easily over a thin layer of crust, sailing over the magma without much opposition from any force, which generated the period of the Variscan orogeny, at which time the islands began to collide, uniting, drying up internal seas, and forcing the fish to come to the surface giving rise to the first reptiles who would inhabit the first great continent in history, Pangaea, from the Greek, all lands, leaving around it a great ocean, Panthalassa, from the Greek, all seas. All the mountains that we see today worn and eroded, such as the Urals, the Appalachians, the mountains of eastern Brazil, the mountains of northeastern Africa, and the massifs of Australia, were in this period the highest mountain ranges in the world, as today are the Andes and the Himalayas. I remember that was the first moment I saw the world. Millions of years later I heard the term Blue Pearl again from evolutionary records of Arcturus who were investigating the genetic modification of species. Due to conflicts generated in the portals of Orion, it was sought to generate a kind of arc where to protect genetics in case many disappeared. Back then, this world was known as Angilusaha, but humans as we know them today did not yet exist. Homo sapiens was in formation, and climate change caused by the eruption of the Toba volcano separated the peoples of Southeast Asia and the Oceanic, leaving the most ancestral humans isolated for more than 60,000 years in an inhospitable and desert geography. While the peoples of Indonesia, as their islands began to fragment, continued to sail among them from present-day Sumatra, Java, Malaysia, Vietnam, to Borneo, Sulawesi, Papua, and from there to Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, Fiji, Tahiti, New Zealand, Kiribati, northern islands of French Polynesia, Hawaii, and Rapa Nui. In addition, one people was locked away from the sea, the native Australians. Me, the rise of ocean peoples, plus one that is not. I am, and yet they are protected by the oceans. The continent of Oceania is basically a continent of islands with their center in one of the largest deserts in the world. Although it is connected to India, its energies have changed completely since it plunged below Asia. Now, Australia is the motherland of all the islands around it, from Papua in the north to Tasmania and New Zealand in the south, from Cocos Islands in the west to Samoas in the east. 
Oceania is called precisely that because it is the land of the oceans. All peoples move between islands, sailing between them, near volcanoes, beaches, almost at sea level in all cases, or directly at sea. However, the desert peoples moved away from the rich coasts to enter a peaceful, unchanged place where time and space remain intact, and thus found the origin of all things, the cornerstone of the universe, the source of all existence. Me, Uluru, I am the largest rock in the world, in the middle of the Australian desert. While the world moved at great speed on the coasts, creating peoples, cultures, civilizations, fighting each other for territories, for rivers, for food, conquering each other, the oldest ancestors of the world discovered that for them all that creation could not be divine without an axis, without the calm of the center. The peoples we now call Anangu, among many others, migrated to the great Uluru Rock, called by some Ayers Rock, where they would sustain the world in transformation. Me, the oldest axis of the world, I am. Therefore, about sixty thousand years ago, this people received the visit of the Heavenly Brothers. Me, the story of the two serpents that descend from the heavens creating the rainbow, creating humanity, the history of creation. I am. The two serpents are the two streams of water and fire, life and death, black and white, the heartbeat of being. The reptilian men first taught the Anangu about the wisdom of the universe, about the importance of holding their axis as everything around it flows. Then the Pleiadians came from the heart of Taurus, and remembered chance as the only way to speak to the divine. The people of the ocean, the Muons and Lemurians, set out to surround the Red Continent to protect their codes until creation was over. The Blues arrived and delivered the necessary codes and prophecies, the plan to follow. For millennia, the native peoples of Australia held the axis of the world during creation. Me. Wait. How? That is, do you say that the last 50,000 years of development of all human cultures, civilizations, the first sedentary lifestyles, religions, the migrations and development of the greatest powers of ancient history and their wars, those of Lemuria and Atlantis, the colonies and manifestation of all the peoples that give rise to all our current cultures in the last 12,000 years, all this was sustained by the Australian people? I am. That's right. As the world moved around them, they were the axis, protected by the most poisonous animals in the world, by a dangerous and inhospitable land that the last thing you want is a new tenant and lets you know, protected by oceans on all its coasts. The Australian centre is almost like a safe, a centre of high national security protection for the sacred. The Axis has cared for itself until the moment when its mission culminated some 150 years ago in 1873, when the English arrived at the centre, at which point the transition to the new Aquarian age began, thus heralding the end of the last great cycle. Me. One of the peoples that humans have considered among the most primitive of humanity have been to whom we owe our existence, our creation. I am. The oceanic continent represents the sacral chakra, the manifestation, gestation, generation of things. Imagine that Earth was pregnant with humans, and in recent months this child's psyche has been generated. Nine months that have seemed nine thousand years, and in all that time Australia has remained intact, only fluctuating with its songs, which sustained every transformation of humanity. There is no evil or good in that land. There is no judgment, only freedom. There are no riches there, for they found wealth within. 
the moment the peoples of the world arrived in Uluru, a new history would begin. They would no longer be responsible for the world in creation. Now it was time for planetary childbirth. Me. What began 150 years ago and will continue for the next 200 years, the birth into a new time. I am. That's right. Remember then, Oceania has sustained the whole process of your creation. The capacity for manifestation, generation, will, transformation, all that you see in the sacred, in the migrations and changes of history, finds its center and logic in the great rock, in the center of the world. Place Oceania in your sacro. Place the Australian desert in the center of your creative womb. And remember that all creation needs a purpose, an axis, and that creative axis is the very will to create and to live. Me. Thank you, Australia, for sustaining everything we have created chaotically. I recognize in myself, I am Oceania. I am transformation. I am. I am life.